This is SSPTV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. Does craft beer, local wine, and golf sound like a nice Friday to you? Well, stay tuned to learn about a benefit for community services for site. Hi everyone, welcome and thanks for watching. Tune in HD on Service Electric Cablevision Channel 513 and download the Samsung Productions app for access to your favorite local shows on the go. I'm Ken Carrot and these are your headlines from SSP TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. Governor Tom Wolf has ordered all Commonwealth flags at the Capitol complex and throughout the state lowered to half staff to honor the victims of the attack at the Route 91 Harvest Festival in Las Vegas, Nevada. The mass shooting has left 58 people dead and more than 500 injured. Per an order from the White House, all Commonwealth flags should be flown at half staff until sunset on Friday. Our thoughts and prayers go out to all the victims and those affected by this horrific event. In other news, a man wanted in connection with a Hazleton Bank robbery was apprehended on Friday night in Kingston. 55-year-old Robbie Gundry of York was arraigned Saturday morning and lodged in Luzerne County Prison in lieu of $100,000 bail. The robbery took place Friday morning at the community bank in the Hazleton Shopping Center. According to Hazleton Police, the individual passed a threatening note to the teller and fled with an undetermined amount of cash. Police identified the suspect and issued a bolo. Kingston police noticed the vehicle dri driven erratically by Gundry. He was arrested after the vehicle crashed into the wall of a gas station. This Saturday, Samsung Productions will host a free premiere of our recently created Angela Park documentary, and you're invited. After more than a year in production, the documentary is now available on DVD. Hear from the park's creators, past employees, and park goers. Come share and enjoy the memories of Angela Park. This free premiere is this Saturday at noon at the Cinema and Draft House in West Hazleton. Seating is limited, and there will be a limited number of free commemorative booklets available on a first-come, first-serve basis. The documentary DVD will also be available for purchase at the premiere for a special one-day price of $19.99. It's this Saturday at the Cinema and Draft House. Doors open at 11.15 a.m. with the documentary premiere at noon. She's provided music at a Hazleton church for 25 years, and now a benefit concert is being planned to help this local woman who is battling cancer. Music for Mandy will be held on Saturday, October 14th at Holy Annunciation Parish in the basement of St. Gabriel's Church in Hazleton. Mandy Ferry, whose maiden name is Marilyn Timko, has been the church's music minister for a quarter century. She was recently diagnosed with cancer. The benefit concert, which will help defray some of her medical expenses, will feature music and and tricky trays and there will be light refreshments available for purchase. It takes place at 5.30 p.m. on October 14th. For more information, you can call Shannon at 570-579-8721. Community Services for Sight, formerly the Hazleton Blind Association, is hosting a special event this Friday and our Lisa Sugar has the details. You are invited to a special event taking place this Friday in our area and it benefits Community Services for Sight. Here to tell us all about it is Lori Lassant, who is the president and CEO of Community Services for Sight. I like the name of this, first of all. Well, it is the Gene Plaza Beer, Wine, Dine, and Nine Golf Tournament. <laughs> Had to practice that a few times before I could say it. But this is a really fun event, and it's named after a wonderful person, and it's for a good cause. So I'm going to let you explain all those details. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Um, yes, Gene Plaza was our driver. He drove our clients back and forth for many years. And he was just one of those people who just touched so many lives, including my own. And after he had passed away, I wanted to do something to, you know, have everyone remember him. So I thought, how fitting. Gene loved golf. He loved our clients. He loved what he did. And Gene loved beer and wine. <laughs> so we figured how great to just put them all together and have this great event. So it's only nine holes, so it's kind of, you know, you're not spending an entire day out on the golf course. A few hours with some friends, you get to taste some different beers from uh, the Cunningham Brewery will be there, and a few other folks will be there, and the Freeze Farm Winery is coming. So, you know, it's really just a nice and fun event, just a great social gathering. All righty, so now this is taking place this Friday, October 6th at 3 p.m. at the Sugarloaf Golf Course. So how do people get involved? Do they sign up? Do they call? Do they need tickets? What do they do? 
It would be best if they would call our office so that we know that they're coming in advance just so we can plan for them. Um, they can call us at 570-455-0421 or they can stop by the golf course as well. Uh, you know, that day we have a lot going on with people coming in. We do try to get everybody pre-registered so we can move them along quickly. It is a prompt three o'clock start so that we get everybody out there and get everybody back in for dinner. And again, just a great time to taste all the, the great beverages that'll be on hand. So if people out there say, I'm not really a golfer, but I do like wine tastings or beer tastings, they're invited too because they don't have to golf. Absolutely. They can come out and just do the tasting. They can have dinner with us, or they can just stop by and do the tasting. They can make a donation to do the tasting. Um, it is $50 to golf, and that includes you know, your golf plus your, your dinner. Or if you just want to come out just to taste and have dinner with us, it's $35. So we tried to keep it very reasonable, somewhat affordable for everybody. And the money that we gain from this, what we do is we put so much into our services and then we take a percentage of it and we started a scholarship fund for children um, that are visually impaired that are going to college. So that we can't pay for them to go to college, but enough that we might be able to buy some technology for them or perhaps a book or something, and that's where that money will go. Um, and again, to continually be able to honor Gene Plaza. Oh, I'm sure he would be smiling down on that. This is a wonderful event this Friday. Again, if you're a golfer, you'll love it. If you're not a golfer, you're still going to love it. So come on out and support Community Services for Sight for the Gene Plaza Beer, Wine, Dine, and Nine Golf Tournament starting at 3 p.m. Call Community Services for Sight. You can call Lori at 570-455-0421. Please help the organization help others. Thanks, Lisa and Lori. Still ahead, we'll hear from the three Hazleton area high school golfers competing in today's District 2 Boys Individual Championship and Fall Rocks at Eagle Rock. Janine Mazurkevich gets us ready for some fun this weekend. This is SSP TV News, your place for 24 hours of your hometown news and information. This is SSP TV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. Lots to do in northeastern Pennsylvania for the fall, and here at Eagle Rock, there is a public event happening this coming weekend, and I am with the organizers. We have Kathy Meisowitz, she's the activity director, and we have Pam Sando, she is the property owner association assistant here, and they put a huge weekend together. You are invited to bring the family out here to Eagle Rock Resort. So we got a nice day to tape these segments, girls. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having us. So talk about first when the event is, what is this event all about? The event is being held at Eagle Rock Resort, okay. one country club drive in Hazel Township, PA. It'll start Friday from at eight o'clock. We will highlight it with a Wise Crackers comedy show, and then it will end on Sunday, at 5 p.m. So it goes through the whole entire weekend, three days. Um, Friday, like I said, we start off with a Wisecrackers comedy show. It runs from 8 to 10 o'clock. Um, you could contact the Activity Center for more information. Uh, Saturday, we have crafters, artisans, food vendors. We will highlight it with a bunch of entertainment. We have energetic and eclectic Le Leilani Chislanis. We have top 40 dance music and classic rock band Flasse Morgan. And ending out the night during our bonfire is our area's top country band, Tommy Guns Band. Sunday, we will continue with um, Leilani and Tulshed Jack, um, the area's party rock band. All right, so there, there's a ton of, of things going on here. It's for the entire family. Um, there will be alcohol, but it will be in an area that is roped off. But Kathy, talk about the preparation for something like this, because you plan all the activities here at Eagle Rock. And this, this event, this fall festival, which is open to the public, that's why we're telling you about it. This is, this is a really big event, and you take a lot of time in planning this and bringing these activities to the public. Yes, and we do take a lot of time because uh, we like to have a lot of fun up at Eagle Rock, and especially with this, this event. Um, we started out maybe about two months ago to get planned. We put out the information for the vendors, which were really important that come in. I guess we couldn't do it if we didn't have the people here, uh, you know, like our, um, like Pam, um, the, the workers, uh, the rest of the um, prop, not, not, 
also property owners because a lot of them uh, kind of get involved in, in volunteering. It takes a lot of people to put this event on, you know, getting the ski lifts ready, getting the place together for it. So uh, we're hoping that uh, all the work that we do do, that you guys come out and visit with us out here. So. Yeah, so, okay, so it's right off of 924. You're going to come right into the main gate and come right down the hill. There'll be signs. It's at the base lodge, so everything will be happening down here. This week, we'll be telling you more throughout SSB TV News about the activities that are going on. There's a pumpkin patch, and the entire list of events is also on our Facebook page, which is Eagle Rock Resort. Time now for weather on SSP TV News. Our weather shot stars a star, our star, a.k.a. the sun in the distance. You can see the stars actually you can't when it's cropped out. But in my field of view, when I took it, you can see the stars and stripes on top of the Traders Bank building. Nice downtown view. Here's our local forecast from the National Weather Service tonight. Mostly clear with a low around 45 degrees. And then for Tuesday on our four day outlook, it looks nice. Sunny with a high near 68. Tuesday night, mostly clear, well below of 47 degrees. Wednesday, the sun's out again with a high of 72. Once again at night, it's mostly clear, low in the mid 50s. Thursday is partly sunny with a high of 74. At night, we have a 30% chance of showers after 8 p.m., mostly cloudy, low of 55 degrees. On Friday, 30% chance of showers, partly sunny, high of 70. And then Friday night, 30% chance of showers, mostly cloudy. Our low is 50 degrees. Let's move right along to your midday winning lottery numbers. Pick two, eight, six, pick three, numbers seven, seven, eight, pick four, numbers two, three, nine, seven, and pick five, two, four, eight, two, eight, and the wild number is two. Very busy high school sports weekend. We'll recap all of it for our local teams with the high school football coal scale after the break. Now for sports on SSP TV News. The 2017 PI AA District 2 AAA Golf Individual Championships, you got that, were held this morning at Fox Hill Country Club in Exeter. Three Hazleton area boys and one girl qualified Matt Boretsky, Brian Bartle, Jordan Pick, and Grace Babinjak. Last week we talked with members of the girls' team. Right now, let's hear from the guys. First up, Boretsky, who just missed out on districts his sophomore year and junior years, losing in playoff holes. He made it this year, and we'll talk about qualifying at the pre-district tournament. Then you'll hear from Bartle and Pick, who has qualified for districts three years in a row and is now aiming at states. Finally, you'll hear from the team's head coach about a key element to the team's success this season. Golf is such a mental game. I mean, how do you overcome that and be a, a confident guy? I mean, just to be like, all right, I have it this year. Yeah, you just you just got to grind. That's like the number one thing that I that went through my mind this year. Was you just got to grind your way through bad shots, and eventually you're gonna have those putts. Grace was telling me it was brutally hot. I mean, oh, was yeah. that a factor as well? Just yeah, I actually got dehydrated on the back nine, and I actually had to stop for a little and to have at least two bottles of water. Then I had to go back out. I started golfing. I think three years ago, I always used to play casually, but I think it was around three years ago where I started actually playing competitively. Qualifying this year, I mean, you said you just started recently being competitive. Yeah. I mean, just talk about working. What did you have to do to qualify for districts? What did you really work on this year? Uh, I really worked on short game this year and mainly chipping and putting. What was it like being out there at that tournament? I mean, it's probably a big tournament. Um, there's a lot of pressure. It was hot. Yeah, it, I was a little nervous, but it ended up being a lot of fun. It was just, it was a goal of mine to make it to pre-districts and then hopefully to districts, so I was happy that I did. I enjoyed a lot. It's a very nice course excellently run. Um, greens very fast. Some of the fastest greens I've ever played. I love the layout of the course. It just appeals to me. I, <laughs> I get a good vibe when I'm there. Um, and overall, it's just a great golf course. What are some of the strengths of your game, man? And what are some, what's some stuff you're still working on? Um, some strengths of my game are my long game, like long irons, driver, getting off the tee. I have no problem with distance. Um, some weaknesses are my putting and short game. That's always tough. You just have to grind. And this year, I think I've improved a lot on my short game, actually. That cut a lot of strokes off. But it's always just a grind on everything. The golf community here in the Hazleton area, every golf course, Sugarloaf, Edgewood, Sand Springs, Valley Country Club, have really rallied around this team um, and this program. And they give us anything that we want. And uh, I'm really proud of that. And I would like to thank all of those folks for, for being supportive of the program. 
We'll have results from the district individual championships tomorrow. What well, was a rough week in the mines for our local high school football teams as they faced some tough competition. But while there were a lot of losses, there were also a lot of positives to take away as well. Here's our week six high school football coal scale rankings. In the league night grade, we have Shenandoah Valley. The Blue Devils' talented quarterback Joseph Carvois went down with an injury in a loss to Minersville. Jared Yoder returned the opening kickoff 75 yards for a score for Minersville as they came up with a shutout by holding Shenandoah Valley to 47 total yards. We always say the league night grade is for teams looking for a spark. Well, Marion forced our hand this week into bumping them up a grade by scoring 41 points in the fourth quarter. And if that's not a spark, I don't know what is. So we start the by two in his grade with the Colts, who beat rival Panther Valley 48-12. Seth Pollock's fake punt got the fun started in the fourth quarter for Marion, and then he had a big interception that led to a score. Max Nolter and Zach Falls had a pick six each during the scoring run. Dalton Rupert had a fumble return for a touchdown for Marion, as the Colts are looking to heat up as they move toward the stretch run. Monoy area dips back down into the bituminous grade after getting shut out by Schuylkill Haven. The Hurricanes win puts them at 2-0 in Division II of the Schuylkill League. The Golden Bears were held to 26 total yards and had four turnovers in this game. Hazelton area holds on in the anthracite grade for our hottest teams after putting up a tough fight against state-ranked Delaware Valley in a District 2 6A matchup. Sparky Wolk had yet another 200-yard passing game for the Cougars. David Smith had an interception and seven catches for 77 yards, while linebacker Damon Horton posted two sacks. The Hazelton area offense did have chances in DelVal territory but could not capitalize, and while the defense Defense played well. Head coach Mike Brennan says the Warriors' tempo and size wore down the Cougars. North Schuylkill was without leading rusher Mitch Wagner and had their starting center injured during the game, but they still hung with unbeatenly heightened. Zach Chowanski had 115 yards rushing for the Spartans, and Doug Wiest had 208 passing yards. North Schuylkill had a chance to tie the game late, but failed on fourth and goal. Tamaqua suffered their first loss to Pottsville. Nick Briner rushed for 99 yards, and Braden Knobloch passed for 101 yards, but Pottsville jumped out to a 21-0 lead and never looked back as the Crimson Tide came up with 453 yards of total offense. And that's Week 6 in the Mines. Now before we get to Ron Marchetti, I want to let everyone know that Hazleton Area senior cross-country runner Franklin Cunningham won the Northeast Invitational at Bloomsburg University over the weekend in a time of 16 minutes and 35 seconds. We'll try to catch up with Cunningham soon here on SSP TV News. Okay, Ron Marchetti is here now with Trivia Treats. October 2nd, that's today. Do you remember what happened? on October 2nd, almost at this very moment in 1978. Hi, everybody. This is Trivia Treats. A three-run homer by shortstop Bucky Dent pushed the Yankees to a 5-4 victory over the Red Sox at Fenway Park in a one-game playoff to determine the American East champion. The Red Sox led 2-0 at the end of the sixth inning, scoring twice against Ron Guidry, who went through the game with a 24-3 record. Boston hurler Mike Torres was sailing along with six shutout innings. Chris Shambliss and Roy White let off the seven with singles. The next two batters were retired, and the count to Dent was 0-2, who then hit one into the screen just above and just fair over the green monster for a Yankee 3-2 lead. It was only Bucky's fifth home run of the 1978 season in 123 games. Boston had the bases loaded. Down 5-4 with two out in the ninth, and Carl Yastrzemski up against Goose Gossage. But Yaz popped to Craig Nettles in foul territory off third base, ending the game. I can remember that game like it was played yesterday. 49 years ago today, but that was October 2nd. Let's go back to tomorrow, October 3rd in 1951. 56 years ago, in game three of a best-of-three playoff to decide the National League pennant, the New York Giants beat the Brooklyn Dodgers 5-4 with four runs in the bottom of the ninth at the Polo Grounds in New York. The last batter that day was Bobby Thompson, who walloped a dramatic three-run homer to give the Giants the pennant. Millions have claimed that they were there that day in the stands to see the shot heard round the world. But only 34,320 were actually there, about 22,000 shy of capacity. Why? I don't know. 
maybe because it was a day game in the middle of the week. Mother of God. It just didn't make any sense. But that was October 3rd, 66 years ago tomorrow. Now let us close it up tonight with the day after tomorrow, October 4th, 1955, four years after the shot heard around the world. The Brooklyn Dodgers finally won a World Series game by beating the Yankees 2-0 in Game 7 at Yankee Stadium. The Dodgers had reached the Fall Classic in 1916, 1920, 1941, 1947, 1949, 1952, and 1953, but lost on each try, and the last five were to the Yankees. Well, 62 years ago from today, after tomorrow, the Dodgers started 22-year-old Johnny Padres, who posted a 9-10 record during that 1955 season. On that glorious day in Brooklyn Dodgers history, Padres went all the way with an 8-hit shutout. It would prove to be Brooklyn's only World Series triumph. The franchise moved to Los Angeles at the end of the 1957 season. This is the last Brooklyn Dodgers yearbook, 1957. Have a nice week. See you Friday. Till then, be a good sport and uh, stay loose. Good evening, everyone. Here's today's Talk of the Town. Surviving Together will meet on Thursday, October 5th at 6 p.m. at Perkins Restaurant on Route 93 in Hazleton. The guest speaker will be Christina Bradford. You must RSVP for this event by Tuesday, October 3rd. To RSVP, call Lorraine or Joan at the numbers on your screen. The Health and Wellness Center in Hazleton is presenting Is This a Heart Attack? What Should I Do? on Wednesday, October 4th from 6 until 7.30 p.m. There will be several guest speakers and people will learn what the symptoms of a heart attack are. If you are interested, you can call the number on your screen. And there will be a sports and celebrity memorabilia auction on Wednesday, October 4th at 7 p.m. at the Diamond United Methodist Church. Doors will open at 6 p.m. For more information, you can call 570-454-4661. And that's today's Talk to the Town. SSP TV News would like to send our sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Pauline P. Boyko of Upper Lehigh. Funeral will be Tuesday at 10 a.m. at the Desiderio Funeral Home in Mountaintop. Friends may call Tuesday from 9 to 10 a.m. in the funeral home. Antoinette Tony Cluck of Drifton. Mass is Thursday at 9.30 a.m. at the Immaculate Conception Parish at St. Anne's Church in Freeland. Friends may call Thursday from 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. at the church. The McHugh Wilczek Funeral Home in Freeland is in charge of the arrangements. And Margie Rondosh of Drums, the Turnbach Funeral Home in Hazleton, will announce the arrangements. Attention pay-per-view subscribers, if you see your name now on SSB TV News, you'll have 13 minutes to call in and win a free movie from Service Electric Cablevision. Today's winner is Dorothy Palmer of Tresco. Call now at 570-455-7267, extension 104, for your free movie. Angela Park documentary, Angela Park the documentary premiere this Saturday, 1115 doors open at the cinema and draft house. Check it out, say hi to me, but if you tell me the Penn State score, that will not be seen as an act of friendship and it will end right there. I have to admit, my mom and I cried during this thing. It's very good. You're going to enjoy it, so please come out and check it out. Plus, we have a chamber mixer being held here next week. We'll preview that as well. We're partying a lot here at SSP TV. Come do it with us, have some fun. We'll see you tomorrow. Take it easy, everyone. Watch us online anytime at ssptv.com and follow us on Facebook and Twitter.